Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be covering the importance of always flying ahead of the airplane and keeping a very tidy and clean cockpit. Now as we intercept the localizer for the ILS runway 10 at KFPR, we will go over some of the important um, tips or tricks that you can use to always uh, fly more structurally. Now for some of you uh, there's a very famous uh, mnemonic as um, ABBA, A -B -B -A, and applying ABBA makes flying easier by providing a clear logical framework for preparing for an instrument approach and here are a few reasons why. Um, structure approach, it breaks down the preparation into a manageable step ensuring that pilots don't really miss a critical task. Uh, it reduces work overload by following a systematic um, order and this way pilots can streamline their thoughts process and focus on flying rather than recalling multiple procedures. Consistency is another important aspect of AVA. Uh, it creates a uniform method that can be applied across different aircraft enhancing uh, familiarity and reducing confusion and obviously it, it increases uh, safety. Thoroughly completing each step ensures that all necessary information and checks are performed, minimizing the risk of errors during critical phases of flight. And it increases the focus uh, with essential tasks uh, counted for. Pilots can concentrate more on flying, leading to a better situation awareness and decision making within the cockpit. So this simpler acronym stands for ATIS, Build, Brief and Approach Checklist. Let's break it down step by step and explore how each component makes flying easier and of course safer. So the ATIS, as some of you are aware, we have uh, ATIS which stands for Automated Terminal Information Service. So ATIS provides a continuous broadcast of important information about weather conditions and runway usage at the airport. Why is it important? Well, before we think about the approach, we need to gather the latest data this includes the wind direction, visibility, current weather phenomenon, and which runway are in use, and of course the ceiling, if it's even um, worth it shooting the approach. So some key points, having this information allows us to make uh, informed decisions about our approach, ensuring that we, have, uh, we are prepared for what to expect as we get closer to landing. Now the second phase will be the build. Um, what does it involve? This step is all about programming our aircraft navigation system such as the FMS or the GPS with the chosen approach. So we'll select the approach, in this case the ILS 10 right for um, our database, our navigation database, ensuring it matches the active runway and current conditions. We'll input, well, you normally would at this phase input all the relevant waypoints and altitude restrictions and set the frequencies for our navigation aids. So, what's the purpose? By building the approach properly, we ensure our systems are ready to navigate accurately. This preparation allows us to fly the approach smoothly and reduces the chance of last minute adjustments. And the next step would be the other B for brief. Uh, now we move on to the briefing uh, section. What it includes, well this steps, uh, as the name implies, is about reviewing the entire approach procedure, the approach plate, ensuring we are ready for what lies ahead. We discuss the approach profile, key points like the final approach fix and the misapproach point and what actions we need to take at each um, step. Contingency plans are also it's crucial to review our misapproach procedure. If something goes wrong, we need to know exactly what to do next. And if we have a co-pilot, this is when we align our understanding and responsibilities. So yeah, briefing re reinforces our preparation and helps us anticipate necessary actions leading to a better execution and teamwork. And lastly, we have the approach checklist where we finally have the approach checklist, um, ensures that our aircraft is set up correctly for the approach and landing. Uh, configuration checks will confirm that the landing gear is down, flaps are set, and speed brakes are armed if needed. Um, systems verification, we check that our autopilot settings and communication radius are set for the approach. 
etc. Uh, cross checks is always important for both the pilot to verify each checklist item to avoid any oversights. And final preparation before we enter the approach, we do a quick visual check outside for situation awareness. And completing the checklist minimizes obviously errors and ensures we are fully prepared for landing and enhancing our safety as and confident. Uh, for conclusion, following the AIBA um, checklist, it really provides a structured approach to preparing for an instrument approach. Each step builds one that uh, previous one, allowing us to reduce the work overload, improve situation awareness, and obviously safety. Well, that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, try to practice AIBA as much as possible. Uh, you'll realize it will really help with the overall aspect of flying instrument approaches. Until next time.